and welcome to another Impact Boulder Breakdown. It's been a little while since we've done one of these, but with the World Cup season starting again, it seems like a really good opportunity to dive in uh, with some of the recent boulders from the World Cup. Um, this one's all about the World Cup in Italy in Brixen. I thought it was some of the best resetting I've seen in a comp in as long as I can remember, really. Uh, so this video is going to be on one of the female boulders. We're also going to do one on one of the men's boulders where we had a Brit representing Max the Future Mill. Um, I don't think I've been that excited to watch a final in a long time. So anyway, let's crack on with one of the women's boulders now. Okay, so this is the final female boulder, boulder number four from the women's final. And here we have Natalia Grossman on the block. Natalia's been like this rising star the last two years. Looked really good last year. Um, this year has kind of had the chance to shine, I guess, because Yanya's stepped away after the first competition. So this was Natalia's fourth win in a row. Uh, and I think she needed to do this in a couple of attempts, maybe it says there. Uh, yeah, top in two attempts to do this. So she fell off here. She probably didn't know that, but she fell off here. She basically had to do it this go. So I want it. we'll watch the boulder in full, first of all. Um, and then have a little closer look at what the resetters have done to uh, really force this cool kind of triple clutch move that you're going to see in a sec. This here, one, two, three, one, two, three. Really nicely set move. No one did it any other way. Um, and then there's also this really interesting technical section at the end. This is like a great example of the fast then slow um, that, uh, that we of often talk about at Impact. It's a real classic kind of comp setting technique where you make the climber commit at the start and then you got to make them like calm their heart rate, really easy to make mistakes at the slow controlled end. People fell off all over this boulder. Um, Natalia did it second go. Some people didn't do the jump. Some people couldn't do the top, like Miho could do the jump easily, but couldn't do the top. Um, so overall, really cool, really well set boulder. Right, let's have a little look through it then in kind of slow time. So the start, position is interesting you can see here that these two holes that Natalia is on with her palms are dual texture um, with a textured scoop on the underside so all you can do really is push into it um, palming is one of the favored techniques favored kind of methods from root setters in comps because it's a really easy way of making people lose control so let's play it on a little bit and I'll kind of try and explain what I mean by that so you can see that she's in quite a stable position here with two palms, but only because she's in tight to the wall and she can push up. You can see here, I'll just pause it as she moves. As soon as she's in this position here, she's still palming on this left, uh, left yellow dual texture hold. But as soon as you move away from that, moving out to the right, and you're no longer pushing up into that palm, you, you lose all control with that hand. Compare that to something like, say that was just the left edge, a down pulling edge, you would be able to maintain the control a lot longer. And the main part of these dynamic moves or, or the first step of setting these dynamic moves is to create that unstable position. So the root setters have created a stable position initially with the double palms, but as soon as you force the climber out of that comfortable range, then it's unstable and you have no choice but to move fast. So now having a quick look at this catch section. So there are three holds of interest here. The first one here that Natalia's got, second one for the left hand, and then a third one for the right hand. So the thing that is tricky about setting the one, two, three moves is basically ensuring that people can't stop in the first position between, between the two first holds. Uh, a lot of times root setters do this by you'll see a lot of paddle dinos where all the holds face the same way. You might hit the first one, go to the second one, and at that point you, you can't stop. In this case they actually oppose each other which is quite interesting. So uh, this hold is a side pull this way, this hold is a side pull this way. So you actually are creating quite a lot of compression. Now if this hold especially, this first hold, was a little bit too positive or a little bit too easy to hold, a lot of the climbers would stop in that position because you can compress between them. What the root setters have done to make sure that that's as hard as possible is that they're actually in like a really tight line. If they were wide like this, it's really easy to compress. Compression in a tight line like this is really hard to get any force. So 
The roots there, as you can see, have kind of created that first tight position to go into the first and second, and then you go wide again into the third hold to make it much easier to control the swing and stop the momentum there. So we'll play that through. You can see one, two. She's really got a lot of momentum as she moves from that second one, because you're moving so fast, the momentum is really taking you rightwards towards that third sloper. So really well set move, really cool. No one did it any other way, which is, which is always cool to see from a root setting point of view that the move like that is like really forced, no cheats, no static methods, um, really good. The second part of this boulder is this like static top section Equally cool, in my opinion, um, but a very different style. So often with these moves, the dynamic kind of triple move or whatever takes up so much of the wall space. You can see Natalia is only a meter from the top of the wall. It's quite often to create an end point that's not just like go to a jug. You're seeing quite a lot of World Cups, especially in the guys' comps where they do like huge dynamic moves and end up three and a half meters from where they started that often they just, and that hold, that catch hold also has to be really good. They'll often hit that and then they'll just do a move to a jug and it's, it's a bit underwhelming. They've done a really good job here of like packing in another element that, that was a point where people could fall. So like Miho got to this point multiple times but didn't do the boulder. So you can see that the main thing to focus on really is basically this small edge up here, that is totally vertical so um it's it's one of the new shape rider cheetah things where you can stack edges on top of each other but they've done it in a way so that it looks it looks small and positive but it's totally vertical so first of all that means that the only way you can get there is statically and because of that you're forced to put the heel in on the left side like this if that was just a down pulling edge you might be able to stab to it fast so that's the first thing. So let's watch Natalia do that move really nice and slowly and controlled. You can see she kind of grabs it with her thumb and then turns it into um, turns it into like a, a Gaston crimp. And then because of because of the angle of this hold, it's so directional. You're only pulling off to the side. You need some opposition. So it's really interesting here. Really cool use of the holds. That this right hand here. To do the move to the crimp, you have to grab it as a side pull to oppose the left heel. And then to move out of that position, you have to change the right hand from pulling on a side pull to palming on top. So if we play it on a little bit here, you can see Natalia's kind of holding the position. And at this point, she has to change to the palm and she can totally change her body position. It allows her to take a bit of weight off that left heel. She can move her right foot up and then it's just a static lock to the end. Really cool, cool boulder, amazing comp all round. If you didn't get the chance to watch it, which maybe some of you didn't due to the IFSC streaming issues at the moment, whole nother video's worth of, <laughs> of discussion on that one. Um, but if you do get the chance to watch it, definitely go and watch it. All the boulders in the men's and women's finals were really good, I thought. Super high quality, fantastic setting. Nice to see in the men's some harder boulders for me. Um, I prefer it when the comps are less reliant on like if you slip off and more 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 of a reward if you do like a hard boulder that no one else did so in the semi-finals Yannick um, I'll put a clip up here but uh, in the semi-finals Yannick um, who ended up winning did the hard power boulder which no one else did so it was looking impossible up to there and then Yannick who's one of the strongest outdoor climbers in the world um, managed to put together that boulder which in a super basic style is probably gonna be in the, I don't know, 8B, 8B plus range, something like that. Just a super hard, powerful boulder. It was like really cool to see that. And cool to see that the root set has still managed to split people on that style. It doesn't have to just be jumping, flicking, slipping off dual texture holds. There's like still a place for just pure power climbing in, in comp climbing. Hopefully that was useful and you enjoyed this boulder breakdown. Make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell below to hear about any new videos that we've got coming out. We're also going to do a second episode about this Brixen event because it was so good focusing on the men's final. So keep an eye out for that to come out in the next week or so. Okay, see you soon.